Okay, now that we have this solution, I would like us to hide function count since it wasn't uh, originally asked for. Um, and what I want to do is I want to hide it. And one way to hide it is, you know, in, in Java, for instance, you have modifiers where you can say something is private or public. And in, in Racket, there's actually a similar functionality, but it works in a different way at the module level, and we're not going to cover that now. There's actually a way simpler way to hide functions. Uh, so in this case, let's try to hide function count. Um, you may see here in the slides that I use the term refactor. And refactoring in software engineering means uh, to change uh, the code while maintaining the functionality. And usually it's... it's um, so refactoring is associated to uh, good practices to make the code more maintainable. So we want to make this code by more maintainable by hiding functions that shouldn't be part of the public interface of our, of our code. In this case, by making a uh, count a private function under quotation mark, uh, under quotes. So how do we make, uh, how do we hide count? Well, there's one very easy way, as we saw before, um, the body of a function is terms. And um, actually I have a, a little slide here. So as you can see, inside a function definition and also inside a function declaration, there are terms. And terms are, uh, where is it? It's either a definition or an expression. That means that we can have, uh, whenever we have a function, we can have nested definitions. So a very easy way of hiding um, count is to hide it inside the body of count up from one. So let's try to do that. I actually already have the solution here, like a good cooking show. Um, here in the slide, you can see what you can do is just put in line the definition directly inside count from up. Since it's not being used el elsewhere, you can then call it directly here after it's defined. And that's fine. That's completely fine. So here is uh, version two. I kind of prefixed it with quote uh, colon v2. And this is just for, you know, to make it different from what we had before so that you have both the version where the code is split up and the tests for each function separately and everything combined here. Uh, one downside of hiding a function this way is that you kind of lose the ability to call it or test it. So that's something to take into consideration as well. But as you can see, um, if I save this and I call it, it works correctly. And if I introduce a bug and I run it, it should fail. Let's see. It it hangs, which is interesting. <laughs> yeah, so it hangs. That's cool. Right. It hangs because... I would like to know why. Oh, because we have this base case where it starts with something smaller than 2. And uh, therefore it would sit uh, forever in the base case. Um, calling it recursively. That's very interesting. Okay, so we're done with this. We've seen how to hide a function. We saw that it works. So why would you want to do this? Well, there are a few reasons why would you, you want you would want to uh, nest functions. Uh, first of all, is what we've seen is that the the function is unnecessary outside. Uh, it may be because you know the function is still under development and you're not a hundred percent sure whether you should make it available. So you want to hide it somehow. Another thing is uh, to be wary of is that anything in the, you know, in the in your public interface of your code, means that it's something that you have to maintain because a user of your code might be calling. So imagine someone is calling count. Now you can't hide it if you re-implement count up from something. You know, if you you were to implement uh, a way faster version that doesn't use count up. So that would be another reason for that. So in the next video, we're going to see a bit more um, like details in terms of, of validity and all that with respect to nested function, nested definitions.